she had a cat. She was mad about cats. But you know what the, the cat's name was? Dogbury. Dogbury. So she ran around the house shouting, Dogbury, Dogbury, and out came the cat. This is a dog. Yeah, but tell them your sister, your mad sister, every time we got a dog, she used to take it for a walk and lose it. <laughs> Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> I had, I had, I had not a sister. Know. The one time she gave it away. I had, and she used to love walking. Until with now. Dogs. She used to love taking them for walks. So she puts the, the leash around the necks and off she'd go. And this one dog got loose off the leash and she walked. For miles, she walked with just a leash about the dog. The dog well, was she was blind too. I mean, not blind. But and she couldn't see very well. She, wouldn't she wear thought glasses. the dog was behind her all the time. Meantime, we lost the dog. <laughs> dog disappeared. Did you ever find it? No. no. And she just walked. And then one day she came home with the dog in the car. Big dog. She had a small car. And he was this big enormous dog. I said, who's this? She said, we found him in the street. She found him in the street, so she brought him to me. I said, I'm not, I don't want him. I don't want this very big dog in my house. Anyway, I said, you better take the dog and put him down where you found him. And she went and she put him down in the street, and you know what? He walked into a house that he belonged to. <laughs> he belonged to this house. And she took him. She thought he was lost. He wasn't lost at all. That's the sort of things that she used to do. Well, Ma, we're gonna, I want to know, we want to know about your family. And family. Yeah, your mom and you came. My grandparents came from Russia with nine children. There were four door, four girls and five boys. They brought them all through to South Africa. Uh, some of them were educated here. The others were older. They weren't. So they couldn't, couldn't talk much English. My mother was a twin. She and her twin were here. But my mother got married here. And uh, the two younger the two younger ones, they were educated here in South Africa, but not the older ones. But you were also a twin. Yeah, I was also a twin, but the little boy died at birth. And my father was so excited with a boy that he forgot to give me a name. So on my birth certificate there was no name, and I was called. They used everybody used to call me Bella, and I hated it. I hate the name of Bella. So when I was Aged about 15, I changed my name to Beverly, but I had to, I had to get a, um, I had to get a, uh, a certificate. You know, I had to send two and sixpence to Pretoria to name myself Bella, Be Beverly, which I've done. So I'm now I've been Beverly for many, many years. So when the, the, the fellows, some chaps that I used to go out with when I was a little older, they used to phone up and say, "I'd like to speak to Beverly." My father says, "That Beverly here." Yeah. No Beverly here and bank the phone down. <laughs> and I lost a date. I lost a few dates that way because he would call me to the phone. He says, no Beverly, because he, he liked the name of Bella and I hated it. Well, how, did, how did you pick Beverly? I, I don't know. I saw somebody by the name of Beverly Nick or somewhere or other and I liked the name. So I called myself Beverly. So it's my passport and my ID book and everything. I'm Beverly. But I actually was registered. You know, because I had to send it to Pretoria. But my father just didn't give me a name. He had a surname and a question mark. <laughs> no name on the birth certificate. So your official name is Question Mark? Yes, that's right. <laughs> didn't, all, didn't all three of you change your names? Yes. All that, there were yes. three sisters. Jane, Jane, Jane. No, Jane didn't. Jane, you never changed. No, Jane, Jane. She called herself Jane. But Jenny, my, she my other sister was, she was born Leah, and she hated her name. She hated it. Where she found this name, I don't know, but she called herself Laline. Laline. So everybody always, they called her Lau. She was known as Lau her whole life. She died at the age of 92, and she was known as Lau, right to her dying day. But that was not really she her real name. We changed you told them when she was in the hospital and she, you wouldn't, none of you would tell the doctor she, how old she was. She would not tell anybody her age. She just refused, she wouldn't. She went down 10 years. <laughs> she went down 10 years. So she got very, very ill one day and we had to take her to the hospital. So I came in and I gave them the details of her age, which she said she was. 
And as soon as husband walked in, he said, we can't do that because she's 10 years old. I mean, she may need difficult, she may need different medication. You better go and tell them, you know, that she is older. So I went to the desk. So they said to me, are you her sister? I said, yes. I said, how can you not know her age if you're her sister? I said, I'm sorry, but, you know, I mean, it was very difficult for me. You know, I couldn't explain to them what she was doing. But she will not tell anybody her real age, but I knew it. I knew it. Did you tell them? I had to tell them. Because, I mean, she might have needed different treatment at 10 years older than, than I said she was, you know. So tell, tell Bob, there were three sisters, three, the Nakin girls. There were three of us. My two, I was the youngest, by 13 years. The other two were 18 months difference, and I was the youngest of 13 years difference. I and didn't that. Were, and you, were you a planned baby, or were you a whoops baby? No, I was a normal baby. <laughs> normal twins. But the little boy, as I say, he died when he was about three. And uh, I came long years afterwards. There was only 18 months difference between the two of them, but there was 13 years difference between me and them. It was a big difference. And those two were always at loggerheads, those two sisters. <laughs> I'll never forget that Janie one day took her hanger and she hit Lal over the head with a hanger. <laughs> And I had to, in, I had to inter, interrupt and, and stop it, otherwise she would have knocked her head off. But even though I was the youngest, you know, it was, I was sort of always in the middle and I was always separating them. Because they were always arguing. Always. What, what about these two? Were they always arguing? Yes, they also do a lot of arguing. They've done a lot of arguing, these two, a lot. I mean, what about when they were kids? When they were kids. And then Sue met her husband, Gary, and she went out with him for of years and uh, he called Sue, he called Mark one day, Gary, one night they came home, called Mark and he said to Mark, go and ask your parents if I can get engaged to Sue. He wouldn't face us himself. So Mark came walking to the bedroom and he said, Gary wants to know can he get engaged to Sue? <laughs> so I said, of course, I was, because I was very fond of him. I said, of course he can get engaged. So the two of them came walking very really shyly into our bedroom. We were both in bed, my husband and I, so uh, we congratulate them. But they sent him in to ask. <laughs> what, what about their biggest fight? Do you remember a big fight with the uh, two of them? Between? Sue and Mark. Oh my God, there were many big fights. There were many. Um, what's the difference between your age? Five years. Mark is five years older than me. Briefly, tell, tell, tell Bob about your, what happened when you first got married and then how you met Daddy. It was World War II <laughs> and I was working at the Sailors Club. They used to come in for, every night the boys used to come in and they used to come to the club, pay a couple of shillings and have a meal. And one of the fellows, now only, only, no officers were allowed into this club. You know, it was just the ordinary soldiers. So one day one of the soldiers came to me he said, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, but he can't come in here because he's an officer. So he took me, after I'd finished, we'd finished 10 o'clock, he took me and we went to the officers club and there I met Aubrey. And we went out for a couple of months and then he asked me to marry him. And I hadn't met his parents and he was rushed off, he had to go off on some kind of commitment or other. He went off and he said to me, wouldn't I please go to the house and meet his parents? I had to go on my own. Were I you was really young, married? I was about 19. Hmm? Were you already married at this point? No, we weren't oh. married yet. And I hadn't met his parents. So I went on my own to meet them with my heart was thumping and I was nervous and I was scared. I was terrified. Where were they? In Johannesburg? They lived in Hillbrow. I didn't even know this. In they Hillbrow. lived in Hillbrow. So I went there and I introduced myself as Aubrey's girlfriend. And we got married. And after that, he came back and we were together for a few months and then we got married. We had a small wedding because the war was still on. But he was a pilot, so you know, he was still, he had been, he had been up north, but he really returned back home. But he was still doing, this. he had to go on coast reconnaissance to watch, to see what was going on, you know, in case we were attacked at any time or other. 
and we went for on, for, for on honeymoon to a little place just outside Johannesburg and this housekeeper kept following me and she kept saying to me I want to take, tell your fortune and I said I don't want my fortune told so what we said to me go and have it done because she's driving you mad so I went and had my fortune she looked at my hand she was did the fortune with my marks on my hand and she said to me I can see water and I can see a dark man with dark hair and I don't know if she said something about this man and I thought she was mad I mean here I'm on honeymoon with my husband and she's telling me a story about a man with dark hair and, and uh, it took my sisters two days to get to me because they had to go to from Johannesburg they had to go to Cape Town from Cape Town they had to get a train to come to this place anyway they finally came and they came to pick, fetch me and we went back to, to Johannesburg and then my sister, sister said to me you must take get a job where you can be amongst people because I was very depressed at the time as you can imagine you know I mean having been married for four weeks only so they got me a job in a hairdressing salon as a receptionist and downstairs was a, a chemist and I had to go and shop there for the, for the salon and who was behind the counter? The man with the dark hair. It's my husband. Well, it was my husband then. My father. I met him and he was very shy, terribly shy. And he saw I was wearing a wedding ring, so of course he wasn't interested in me. And I kept running in and out and in and out. They used to say, every time I walked in there, they used to shout, Harry, your girlfriend's here. And he was terribly shy and they didn't mm -hmm. want to come out. Anyway, after a while, after a good few months, you know, he said to me, I see you're married. So I said, no, I was married. And I told him the whole story. He had just come out of the army. He'd also been in the army. He'd just come out. And that was the dog man that this fortune teller was telling me about. And we got married. And we were, we were married for 61 years, very really happily. And you know, as, as you know, he's just passed away. It's 14 or 16 months, or like, uh, 16 months ago. And that was my life. So all we was my husband for exactly four weeks mm -hmm. and I had my mother-in-law my husband's mother was not one bit happy with me because this, Harry was a younger son and he was getting married to a widow and she was very much against it I mean the fact that I was a young widow she was she didn't she didn't want to meet me she was not interested she didn't want to meet me but of course I had to meet her but she wasn't really nice to me I'm she was not really nice. She didn't like me because I was a widow. Mm. But anyway, we were very happy and that's all that mattered. And then you had three grandsons. Well, you I didn't was have the them. I <laughs> got three grandsons. No, we've already talked about you and I. I lost, I lost three babies. I mean, I, I had you three won. me and Sue. I, I had three miscarriages Force. before. I, I lost three. Why were there five years between our uh, age? I think I couldn't fall pregnant all again after that. I, I don't know. I suppose I was, you know, so pent up after all this. Then I, when I had Sue, when I was pregnant, I had to be in bed almost every month to try and save it. Anyway. It. <laughs> <laughs> save it to your daughter. <laughs> But when he was born, the first thing I said when I opened my eyes is he black. <laughs> I don't know what made me say that. Oh, but as he was That's born, why I, am like I, am. <laughs> I said to the nurse, is he black? Why? I said, no, no, no. I really don't know. Well, they also asked you if you wanted me to become born on the 1st of April, and yes. you said yes. The doctor, this doctor that I was under, this pediatrician, he came walking up the up the passage. Now, first of all, I had to go into the nursing home on the 31st of March. He said to me, I want you in tonight and we'll have to, we'll have to induce, induce labour. So I went in and on the 1st of April, he comes walking up the passage, Beverly Rishkin, do you want an April Fool or should we wait until tomorrow? I said, if you don't mind, we'll have an April Fool. And that is why you got it. <laughs> and I got an April Fool. <laughs> So talk about your grandsons. No, and no. tell them about his eczema. Oh, God. 
we had to bandage this poor child up. He was suffered with, as, with eczema, his whole body. I'd have to bandage his hands at night and I'd have to bandage his legs. Otherwise he scratched himself to pieces. And for two years, my husband and I now hardly, asked, hardly had a night's sleep because he was in a terrible condition, you know, and we tried everything. In those days, they didn't have what they've got today, you know. So I used to have to bandage his little hands and bandage his little legs so that he wouldn't scratch the whole night. It was awful. So <laughs> he screamed from morning to night for two years solid. Yeah, he did. He nearly drove us mad. And then eventually he settled down. But now we know why he is what he is today. <laughs> and what about your sleepwalking? Oh, you sleepwalk? Yeah, I used to sleepwalk. Where'd you sleepwalk yes. to? Don't you know that we had the little gate put upstairs? We had a little yeah, gate. You don't remember the little gate? One years old. Because one day I got out of bed when she was walking and she was at the top of the steps. <laughs> oh, my, I thought she was going to fall any moment. So the next day we had a little gate put up there. So that when she walked, she walked up to the gate and walked back again to her bed. Do you remember that? Sleepwalking. Did she do anything fun when she was sleepwalking? No, she didn't. She used to just walk to the top of the steps, stand, you know, and turn around and walk back. But I was terrified in case, you know, she would just slide down the steps and hurt herself. So we had a little gate put up there for her. I do remember it was a wooden gate. No. Yes, a little wooden yeah, gate. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, why we did that is because of her sleepwalking. I, I remember you and Auntie Lars standing over my pram screaming at each other about who's going to walk me. <laughs> you were, he, he was a big boy already, and my sister, you know, no. she never had children. Well, how old was he, like 12? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a big boy, he was about, mm. no, he was, he was really about like five, four or five. And still and, in a pram? And my sister used to still put him in the pram, his legs were on the floor, <laughs> on the ground, but she was pushing him. <laughs> She was taking him for a walk because she was mad about him. She was crazy. Why? I don't know, but she was crazy about him. But you know, not having any children of her own, she, she, she was mad about both of them. Talk a little bit about Auntie Janie. What about her? What a beautiful. She was very beautiful. My Tracy's grandmother. My eldest sister was very, very beautiful. God knows Tracy. She was married at the age of 18. And uh, she was very, very young. And she went to live in the country. So I used to put the two children into the car with my nanny and I used to go there three, four times a year. We used to go there for a, a holiday, for a break. I used to drive, it was about two hours away, but I used to just take the two of them and off we went. We used to have lovely, lovely breaks there because away from Johannesburg, from the noise, you know, like, like you get away to get, get a, what? Get a Garrison. From Manhattan, it was wonderful. Did you enjoy Garrison? I loved it. What a beautiful place! Have you ever been there? No. Ah, uh, it's just so beautiful. One of the most beautiful spots I've ever been to, and quiet and peaceful. It was beautiful. And we stayed in this little place. It was built in 1781. Was it, it was on the river? No, it was a, a stagecoach. Stuff. It was. Oh, it Near was the river. river. It was really lovely, lovely and old and peaceful. It was beautiful. Did you say way into her grandchildren? No, we don't need grandkids. No, we but have to. Okay. Be tell, tell them about briefly about your beautiful grandsons and their wives and your grandchildren. Just say you love them all very much. That's enough. Well, they're going to be watching. This <laughs> I said she 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 has she has to. Has to. I said Sue had this, the first, her first son. My grandson, I was absolutely over the moon to be a granny. I was so excited. But as he grew, you know, as he was growing up uh, older, he couldn't say granny, so he called me Gaga. <laughs> so I've been known as Gaga. Now the second boy came, he knew me as Gaga. The third boy came, he knew me as Gaga. Now I've got seven great grandchildren and they all call me Gaga. I got it from the big one. But now my big grandson, Sue's eldest, he's about six foot four, huh, Sue? Yeah. About six foot four. Two. Big, strapping fellow. And he owns an enormous business. He owns a security business. So when he phones me from the office and there are people there, he doesn't say, hello, Gaga. 
<laughs> das ist Herrn Graf, you know. Das big strappy man, sein Haller Gaga. So then he said, Haller Gray, you know, but otherwise I'm Gaga to all of them. Even the little ones, the tiny you, little ones. They also know me as Gaga. Do you like Gaga better than Bella? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. I prefer Gaga to Bella. I just don't like Bella. Although in Italian, it means beautiful. I know that, but I still don't like it. I just don't like it. They're outside. Is there anything you want to say that they don't know? <laughs> Not really. Well, as soon as I say, you know, Sue was a wonderful child. She really thought it was But Mark gave me a tremendous amount of headaches, especially when he was a teenager. He hated school and he just... Oh, he gave me so many headaches. I had to force him to get up in the morning and go to school. He just didn't want to go. And he, and then he, he was just an impossible boy. And then when he was older, he also gave me a lot of headaches. He was, he just gave me headaches. He was a very, you know, we used to go out at night. I used to leave him at home. He was about, you know, at, in, in South Africa, you've got to be 18 before you get a license. And Mark was about 14, 15, and we used to go out at night. And we used to come home, and we've got two, we had two cars. So we used to park our car, and I used to put my hand on my car and feel it was hot on the bonnet. So I knew that he had stolen my car that night, and he'd gone out driving at that age. How old? About 14, 15. <laughs> and I'd come home and pull the blankets off him, and there he was in his clothes, because he had just come home. And he was terrified that I we were, would find him, you know. So, so he would just put the blanket and pretend that he'd been fast asleep for hours and hours. But I know he wasn't because we put our hand up on the car and felt it was hot. <laughs> what about a Sue story? Is there any Sue story that you can share that she doesn't know? That? About her just growing up? Like just like with Mark and the... Sue was, you know, Sue just grew up, but so easily. And she didn't, she didn't meet many, she didn't go out with many fellows. She met Gary when she was 15. And she's been married now for 39 years. And they had a wonderful marriage. He's a wonderful boy. Now when she met him, he had nothing. He was in the army. He didn't have much money. And when he came out the army, he said to his father, can his father buy him a jacket so he can go and look for a job? And his father said, when you work, you buy your own jacket. He wouldn't give him. So I gave it to him. And we got his jacket and he went to work and he, he is so brilliant this man. He, at the age of 15 years retired. Sue and Mark are my life. I mean I don't know how I could ever possibly live without them. They just are the most wonderful children. They have been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to my husband and to myself. I just, I just love them both very much. I love them, I love my grandsons, I love my great-grandchildren, I love my whole family. And especially now that my husband passed away, they are just so wonderful to me. I'm surrounded by them. I've moved into a little townhouse nearby, and they are wonderful to me. They're a wonderful family. I'm very lucky to have a family like this. And even though Mark's far away, he's still very attentive and still very affectionate and still very loving. You wouldn't think so, but he is.